please find your seat and sit down. Colleagues, maybe you can chat after our session. Okay, I'm going to start now. Good morning. It is such an exciting day. My name is Lianhua Huang, ICM board member from Taiwan. It is my great honor to moderate this main session five. This session will present innovative strategy that are engaging nursing to shape the influence global region, regional, and national agenda and policies. Firstly, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Judith Sherman. Of course, I know you all know her. <laughs> Dr. Sherman is the immediate past president and president emerita of ICN, the past president of Canadian Nurse Association. She is professor at Lawrence Bloomberg Faculty of Nursing at the University of Toronto and the founding executive director of the Office of Nursing Policy at Health Canada the Canadian federal government. She holds four honorary doctorate and is the recipient of numerous awards, including Canada's most powerful woman, <laughs> top 100 award from the Women's Executive Network. Dr. Sherman has a strong track record of international voice and policy engagement over the last few decades. Dr. Sherman being the force behind building the relationship and partnership with the World Bank, Japico, EXA, etc. Let's welcome Dr. Sherman and all the panelists with around the class. Okay, oh, we are on. Good morning, wasn't it a marvelous morning so far? I am going to move us quite quickly along because I know we're standing between you and coffee and I know how does it feel when you need a shot of coffee. But I think we have some very important messages to deliver in the context of the title and what we have seen this morning. So repeat what Leanne said. This is a session about innovative approaches to advance global agenda. And that's where our emphasis is. Yes, our approach is concentrating around human resources, but it's the innovative approaches and working in a different way and thinking about working beyond healthcare to health. And I think our presentations will reflect on that. The other comment I would make before I introduce the panelists is that what we have seen this morning, in my opinion, has showed us that we have turned the corner. Far too many years so we've been talking about data, 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 which is very important.
but not enough about action and intervention. And what we heard this morning brought from uh, Dr. Aiken and that panel and Dr. Tedros is moving to action. So I think the, a call for us, including what we talk about, is for action. So let me very quickly, and you have more broader bios in your book to introduce our distinguished panelists. And remember, this the innovative approach to work differently. To my immediate left is Professor Kama Rogo. Professor Rogo has worked with the World Bank for decades and he's currently overseeing all of the health agenda on behalf of the World Bank in Africa. To his left is Professor um, Yosua Dambisia, and Yosua is the Director General of EXA, which is the East Central South African community, health community, that works with 16 to 18 countries, the numbers vary, uh, with the ministers and governments. To his left is someone who needs very little introductions, Dr. Leslie Mancuso, who is first a nurse, as she says, and second the president and CEO of Japaigo, which is one of the largest NGOs and probably the only nurse who is the president of an NGO, an international NGO, and probably one of the very few women who are the president and CEOs of NGOs. To, to her left, again, is another woman who needs very little introduction, uh, Tembeka Gwawa, who is the second vice president of ICN and has been the founding transformational leader of the NOSA that brought together all the various sectors of nursing in South Africa at difficult times under the leadership of Mandela. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have in front of you an incredible group of individuals to talk about the innovative approaches. Very quickly, Annette mentioned that her watchword is together. When I became the president, my uh, watchword was impact. And when I looked at what that means, basically I have seen a lot of work within nursing, although we have our challenges, we were lacking the impact and the work outside of nursing, and many of you heard me to talk about bubbles. So as the president of ICN and representing nursing worldwide, the question was, how are we going to make an impact? And that took me six months after I became a president to the World Bank in Washington, so that was 2014 that started a relationship that brought us to some of what is here and beyond. And the notion is that, yes, we all talk about we need to work in a global setting, but the question is what does it mean and how we do it and how we work with bubbles that we don't necessarily always think that are our friends or they necessarily see things eye to eye. So at that point, when we went to the World Bank, we started a relationship that then led in, by 2016 to the notion that we should look at some issues as it relates to human resources. And that's when I was introduced to uh, Professor Rogo that basically have taken the agenda by storm and been moving it, and he will talk a bit about why and how. He brought along Prof. Yaswa, who is the Director General, as I said, at the, EXA, and then we also integrated with Japaigo, who has a very strong, long-standing relationship with ICN and a memorandum of agreement to working together. And of course, Tembeka being central and representing ICN in Africa has been instrumental. So again, think of it as innovative and different ways to work together. And with those very brief comments, I'm going to invite Professor uh, Rogo to uh, make some comments. Thank you very much, Judith. Can you hear me? It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, the first mention I want to make is to try and make peace between the institution I work for, called the World Bank, and all of you. The World Bank is an institution that is seen as a mysterious one by most of you, 
especially you health professionals. But it's important that we understand it. The World Bank is actually a set of five institutions that were started after the Second World War for the reconstruction of Europe. The full name of the World Bank is IBRD, International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Remember those two words, reconstruction and development. There are three institutions amongst those that you probably are more aware of than the other two. The first one is what you usually call the World Bank that deals with your governments by lending money to governments. And those monies initially used to focus on infrastructure, but increasingly it was found that infrastructure alone was not enough and it spread into human development. So health, education, and social protection now become one of the biggest areas of expenditure for the World Bank, and we are the biggest financer of loans in health across the world. The second institution is IFC, the International Finance Corporation, which is the private wing of the bank. It lends to private individuals and institutions across the world. And nurses and nurse businesses should not be left out of that. The third one is the one that you probably know because of ignominy, what we call the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. This is a special fund that deals with governments when they are in absolute trouble. So when the economy is not moving and they are almost falling apart, they run to the IMF to bail them out. And like any other bank, when you go for bailing out, usually there would be some conditions that you have to satisfy for you to get back to real health. It's like you are in intensive care unit. So when you're going to intensive care unit, you'll need oxygen, you'll need respiratory support. And you'll have to abide with what the nurse tells you. So IMF becomes the bad nurse who tells the government what you must and must not do. And oftentimes, the news is not good, and it affects people, it affects staff, it affects nurses and doctors. This is where we got our bad fame on what we were calling structural adjustments that have to be made by a government. Sometimes it means that people must lose their jobs or certain institutions need to be closed. But remember, the reason why it's being done is not because IMF wants it, but it's because your government mismanaged your own economy. Now, these three institutions are important for us as we sit here today. Because as we look forward to UHC, it requires more investment, it requires more prioritization, and where we move forward. In each one of your countries, there is a World Bank office. We are global. And the question that I would like to ask the nurses and the associations that are here is what is the level of contact that you have with the World Bank team in your own country? Are you aware that they are working with the government to provide some resources for this sector? Are you aware that as private citizens and business people, you can also gain from there? Are you aware that there are special loan programs that are meant for small and medium businesses, which include health sector businesses, which include nursing homes? Are you aware that we actually have special gender-focused loan mechanisms to start engaging more closely with those areas? 
because there's an opportunity there that I would like to discuss further. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have you? So again, the key messages, and I had someone before we came up from the Balkan countries saying, can you help us with the World Bank? And my question was, do you know the people in your country? And the answer was no. So you have to start at that level. It doesn't start in Washington. Okay. Professor Ayaswa, please tell us how the innovative approaches and partnerships need to spread at the regional level and work in collaboration with the global agendas like the World Bank, like the ICN. Please. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you very much, ICN, for asking me to be a part of your very exciting Congress. Um, unlike the World Bank, I work for a much smaller organization which is composed of nine member states that are Commonwealth member states on the southern, eastern, and central parts of Africa. But our footprint is increasingly expanding through programming and projects to more than 20 countries. Our claim to fame at this conference is through a college that we grew through our processes, the EXA College of Nursing, EXACON, that I hope and wish all of you have heard about by now. Uh, what we do, essentially, as a sub-regional organization, is to deconstruct or disaggregate some of the bigger messages, such as those that have been summarized by Director General Tedros, and bring them down to the regional context. Find the common areas that we can work on regionally, find areas in which we can strengthen the processes within the countries to ensure that we give effect to these ideals. As you may know, since the establishment of the World Health Organization, the ideal of health for all, which is really what universal health coverage is about now, has been the essence of what we should be about as a health sector as health professionals. And by and large, Africa has been found, mis uh, been found wanting in a number of areas. One could cite the Alma Atta Declaration of 78 on primary health care, where health for all was, by the year 2000, was the, the riding cry. Most of us miss that when one deconstructs the MDG framework, a lot of the issues that needed to be addressed really spoke to the inadequacies in health, the inadequacies in health services, and the inadequacies in health service delivery within the African context, perhaps more than anywhere else. And when the WHO issued uh, the, World, uh, the World Health Report in 2016 that focused on the health workforce, the disparities and the crisis in many of the African countries were the leader of the messages out of that. In that context then, we have increasingly engaged the various levels of our policy and decision makers through the East Central Southern Africa Health Community, uh, from the technocrats uh, such as yourselves, expert committees, to our directorates of uh, uh, medical or health services, right up to the health ministers to ensure that we have enabling resolutions that can then inform programming within the countries. Thank you. The Exa College of, uh, the Exa College of Nursing 
as in the last uh, 25 years or so that it has been in existence, worked very closely on the ground to improve the standards of nursing in all aspects. And one of the modalities that we have uh, started using increasingly is ensuring that the four pillars of nursing, the training component, the government component, the regulatory component, and the national associations work uh, in an integrated manner to ensure that nursing realizes the potential of the force that it is. That's what I will say briefly. Thank you. And again, the message is that in each one of your regions, there are organizations similar to this. Are you connected? Are you aware? Are you engaged? Are you part of that engagement? Leslie, you are in many, many countries, and you, have, you see it from prime ministers, kings, queens, first ladies, to the front line where the real heroes, the nurses deliver day in, day out, and others. What's your take on how, what are the new approaches we have to do in order to move our agendas forward? Well, thank you, Judith. It's wonderful to be here. Um, as Judith said, we're an international NGO. We work currently in more than 40 countries around the world, 28 of them being in Africa. We've been in Africa for more than 45 years. And our focus has very much been around creating and delivering transformative healthcare solutions that save lives. Now, let me be clear, as an organization, we're focused on having a seat at the table at the global level and having boots on the ground, right, in all, every aspect, from the household to the hospital, from the village to the city. So what does that mean? That means that I have a workforce right now of 4,000 interprofessional staff with 1,000 of those being nurses and midwives, and the majority, 90% of those, being from the countries in which we work. We work to ensure that those nurses and midwives have a seat at the table at those global meetings, whether it be ICN or WHO or UN, when standards are being developed when new materials are being developed, when looking at new directions, whether that be in HIV AIDS, maternal child health, cervical cancer, malaria, surgery, and so many other new areas like TB and non-communicable diseases. So that's one aspect by which we are really, you know, in Barcelona I said, if you don't have a seat at the table, bring your own chair. And I said that very sincerely, but I also meant that not only did we need to um, support and ensure that we had the right nurses and midwives at the table, but we also had to ensure that they had the right skills, the right knowledge, and the ability and the, and the fortitude in themselves to believe that they knew better about health than anyone else. And so a lot of our work with the boots on the ground, if you, if you will, is listening and working with our nurses that are from these countries, that are working day in and day out. We make sure that they're sitting on the working committees of the ministries, whether that's the Ministry of Education or the Ministry of Health. You know, when you're working on Ebola, when the Ebola crisis happened, a lot of the health workers that were affected were nurses and midwives. I had nurses and midwives already working in Liberia and Guinea. And we saw so many things happening, maternal child health clinics shutting down because everyone was afraid. We saw everyone running in from different groups. And we said, how can we best help the minister? And the minister and Japaigo talked and said, let's put a nurse midwife in every working group that's going to look at the health system and what the needs of Ebola are. So our nurse midwife, who then had been promoted to country director, serviced that role and worked on areas like reopening the maternal child health clinics to ensure that we were taking care of women and children in Liberia. So it's really about working at all different levels. Now let me be very clear. The one piece I haven't mentioned that you've already heard is the whole regional and other partners. We cannot just work 
with the governments. The governments are our driver. We listen, we support them. But we also must work with the nursing associations and the nursing councils, as well as other government leaders. There are many decentralized governments. We must include them in the strategy in which we work. Exacon has been a partner of ours for many, many years, as well as the West African Council of Nursing that is also here. I know their leader is here. And so I really believe that there are opportunities within these regional groups with WAHO and EXA and others to again work these issues. World Bank, I thought Kama did a brilliant job of talking about how World Bank fits in. We must take ourselves out there and work with these groups because that's what is going to make a difference. A partnership made up of a variety of us and not just nursing talking to nursing. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. And the important thing that you see here, and it's not the time to tell the story, that we all walk the talk. We actually been working together the last two years to deliver real deliverables that will lead to additional investments and changes in the region. Tembeka, ICN has been the umbrella organization moving this forward. I was delighted to see that in the strategic plan there is strong emphasis on working outside of the nursing bubble. You being in the African region and seeing your colleagues and being a former uh, director of an NNA. What's your take on how we need to work differently to make sure that we meet UHC or any other global agenda? Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Judith. As you have said, ICN is a member organization and at a country level, we have an organization that will affiliate into ICN. And we have also had a, a Professor Yoswa describing how in this region, ESCA, we work. And I'm going to take it down to the country. He mentioned that at a country level, we belong to ESACON. And at a country level, we have formed what we call its quad, where the NNA, which is a member of ICN, together with the regulatory body, the chief nursing officer, and the educators, they work together. I'm quite aware that not all countries have got uh, chief nursing officers but it would not mean that we should not work with the government because even if there's no chief nursing officer, there will be a nurse who would be responsible for nursing in that particular country. So for me, it is not about the title, it is about at a government level who speaks on behalf of nurses, who is linking the profession and the government. So we would take that person. To, to, to work with us. Obviously, in our, in our region, almost all the countries do have regulators. Now you come to the education sector. The countries, they differ. Some big countries, like for example, South Africa, will find that the educators have organized themselves. So we'll work with that person. We'll ask those, that structure, to give us a person to work with. And I want to say, if all these structures can work together, an ability to look into the big picture, because also that's the challenge that we have. We at times like to compete with each other as these structures. And if we do so, we're doing that at the detriment of the profession. So many things have been said here. Nursing now, 2020 being the year of the nurse, I believe in countries where you have these structures working together, I tell you, this powerlessness that we always feel, it will be history. It really will be history. And I want to say, let us go back at a country level. You can't have an international structure working well if you do not have a structures of nursing on the ground at a country level. So for me, that's the message to all of you. Thank you very much.
Okay, let me conclude so we all can uh, go and have coffee. I don't want to leave us with the perception that building the relationships between nursing system, region and global is easy. But my comment to you is that we have no choice, we must do that, and we must persevere with it. It's not going to happen because you have one meeting with the World Bank or with Japaigo. It's going to happen because you're going to stay the course, going to work as uh, Tembeka describes, and persevere. I stayed involved with ICN and promoting it because relationships matter. It's people that come together, have shared vision, persevering, vision, relationship, and a commitment to the common goals of building healthy people and healthy nations. So I know we all can do it, and thank you for being here, and let's work in different ways so we can achieve UHC, we can achieve SDG, and nursing can deliver in what we able to deliver and what we are called upon to deliver. Thank you very much, and Leanne, over to you. Thank you for all the speakers, Dr. Sherman, Dr. Rocco, Dr. Dembia, and Dr. Makuso, Dr. Guagua, for the very inspiring, inspiring, informative speech on African experience in our program agenda. We were planning to have another speaker, Dr. Sylvia Cassiani. Since her boss, Dr. Tedros, uh, Dr. Cassiani is from WHO. Since her boss, Dr. Tedros, is here to speak, we will find other time, another time for her to speak. So the second session we will find the other time, we will not do it now. Finally, I have an announcement before I close this session. Taiwan Nurses Association will host 2020 International Nursing Conference endorsed by ICN. Please visit TWNA booths B17 for more information. You will get a small gift. Thank you. Let's give them another big, big applause.